we're going to leave an additional five, six hundred thousand in there over and above what you've ever spent. So we didn't drain those down to the to the minimal amount. Um, they had a savings of over ten million dollars. We are leaving one million of their savings account. And like I said, about a half a million of excess annual collections to build that one million back up in case they need infrastructure improvements, in case they need equipment, in case they need something else. So those decisions were not made lightly at all. Um, and once we had those meetings, once we scoured through the budget, we felt like these were reasonable numbers that we could pull from the existing public health millage and rededicate to something like drainage, whether those two have anything to do with each other or not, was not a concern of mine. It was, do we need this money in the public health millage to do what it's supposed to do for the public? And if not, how much needs to be in there? And there was far in excess of what needed to be in there. And that's when we said, well, we can rededicate some of this to drainage and to create um, this this cultural millage to allow us to plant this seed to generate even more tax dollars and so uh, I just want the public to know that it was with a lot of effort a lot of thought that went into it and it was not something that was done lightly thank you mr. Bellard yes mr. chair can you get mr. Escott mr. Robodeau and mr. tubes hot please and I guess where I'm going to go with this is why you were saying you were looking at all avenues um, one of the avenues that I, I want us to, to look at with your administration, with you and whoever else on this council that wants to join us, is the library millage. Um, I'd like Ms. Toops to let me know how much is in the library account at this time. At the end of fiscal year 2016, that would have been October 31st, 2016, they had an ending audited fund balance of $39.5 million. Of that amount, 14.5 was dedicated to ongoing capital improvements. So they had about 24.8 million that was not dedicated to ongoing right. capital improvements. And I guess what I'd like to reach out and, and have a meeting with the people of the library, with the city parish president, Mr. Escott, when would we be able as a council? Because I do appreciate what Mr. Robodeau did. He said, this is a need for our parish putting money in this drainage. As a councilman, I hope my other eight councilmen will back me, I feel the same need that he does for the people that have flooded. And if there's excess money in that account, I would like to do the same resolution, the exact same thing he's doing. Number one, can we do that as a council? Obviously, we're doing it now, but I want to hear it from you. Right, absolutely. Okay. And I don't know how many days we'd have to advertise it. Obviously, I need to meet with the people of the library and the administration and whoever in the council would like to meet with it. But we as a council need to show the same thing Mr. Robodeau is doing, how serious we are. They explored some avenues. I don't know if he explored this avenue or not, but I think we need to look at it. And I know that not, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's the library. Well, if you're flooded, you can't get to the library. If your roads aren't good, you can't get to the library. And I'm just saying this as a council need to step up, and that could be our initiative too, to do that. And if you can, Ms. Veronica, let me know when's the last possible timeline to put it as a resolution and I'll we'll get with the administration and the other council members and see if that we can do that thank you that's all I have to say mr. Terrio yep I support what mr. Bellard said and just to uh, continue on that uh, there's an old saying and it, it's pretty close but um, the amount of money that's generated with the three millages that the library has that the, the voters approve the, and I got to clarify that the voters approved three different millages for the library that brings in more money than we have millages providing for roads, drainage, bridges, bridges combined. That's how much the libraries take in. Now, no disrespect against libraries, you know, that's fine. But like Mr. Bellard said, if there are available monies that are out there that can be used, I'm behind it 100 percent. That was also brought up uh, probably four or five years ago, but I don't think they had the fund balance that they have at this point. Um, pertaining to this particular this particular resolution, um, I'd like to first say, I mean, um, uh, I understand what the administration is trying to do uh, with this. I do support the the rededication of moving money 
from this particular one to drainage. Uh, I do not support the CREATE initiative that would have provided the additional money. So with that said, I'm going to be clear, you know, I, I can't support the resolution. Uh, but again, I want to clarify that I support the rededication, but in my opinion, the whole amount should have gone to drainage. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, for those who are in attendance and those listening via open channel or the, the internet, um, I just want to make for the record, uh, Councilman Cone, Councilman Nakan, Councilman Castile, and myself for the last 14 months have been addressing the, uh, in particular, the parish budgetary needs. And a big part of that um, is, of course, drainage issues, parish wide fire protection, as well as. Um, the library, which was brought up recently. Um, the library has been participating because we, we've looked at every millage. Um, the parish president, the mayor president, has participated in those, the finance department, um, as well as every municipality in the parish of Lafayette, other agencies such as the district court judges, the district attorney, the parish tax assessor, every, every entity that is in receipt of a dollar from any parish um, um, source has come before this group to draw a much much bigger picture of our forecast and um, uh, the library issue is that is not new it has come up before as Mr. Terrio has indicated the voters has chosen to to do that um, you see the parish wide library system that's in place these regional concepts and what they do so um, any any um, any attempt uh, to look at any of those funds is actually already in the process, um, as well as other folks, um, Bayou Vermilion District, uh, Lafayette Economic Development Authority, uh, Lafayette Airport, any of those. Uh, the key is not the council. The key is the people. The people make those determinations. That's what Mr. Robido is offering here. This council is simply going to vote to give the people an opportunity to speak. And as he indicated, if they say no, well then we come back and we continue to work with those seven plus million dollars that's available. If they say yes, we work with the, you know, in excess of 12 million a year that will then become available. Um, and then there's this little create thing over here to the side um, that seems to have drawn so much attention on this, on this really, really huge issue. So, uh, there's a big, if you would like to, please stay tuned because the meetings are about to kick up again and there will actually be a big parish-wide um, forum that's going to take place. Uh, I actually have a letter that I just received from the town of Broussard. They just passed a resolution um, that I'm going to be coming forward with um, in the next couple of weeks as it relates to generating funds to address parish issues. So the ball has been rolling. Know that that people haven't been sitting down doing anything. These considerations are on the table. So with that said, let's call the vote. <coughs> Just four? for the record, everybody, every public person has spoken, right? Yes, we sir. clear, we good on that. Okay. Yeah, this is, this, this is no amendment. This is the actual resolution itself. District four? Yes. District five? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? No. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. We're going to now move to ordinances for final adoption. Again, this is a public hearing and blue sheets are available for anyone wishing to address the council. The five minute rule does apply. Jeremy, could you please read item number 10? Ordinance 119, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council declaring the building or structure located at 104 Marie Street, Lafayette, Louisiana, owned by John Seymour, care of Gerald J. Block, attorney appointed to be dilapidated and dangerous to the public welfare and ordering the condemnation of same. Motion by Nakam. Second by Conk. Council discussion. There is none. Any blue cards? No, sir. Please call the vote. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. 
Motion to adopt is approved. Ordinance 121, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the Unified Development Code so as to reclassify the properties of Glenn Perret, case number ZON 2017-21, 200 and 300 block of North Domain Avenue rezoning, located generally on the corners of Windhaven Lane and North Domain Avenue, north and south of Windhaven Lane and west of North Domain Avenue from residential single family to mixed use neighborhood. Motion by Conk. Second by Lewis. Council discussion. There is none. Any blue cards? I do have six blue cards, the first of which is Glenn Perrette. Ladies and gentlemen of the council, uh, Mayor, uh, can you can you bring the mic a little closer to okay, your mouth, please? I'm, I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm here today to uh, uh, represent my family on this uh, this particular piece of property. Uh, years ago, my dad uh, had agreed to incorporate. Uh, his property on uh, Domain Road in the uh, late 70s. Uh, it was, at that time, uh, it was uh, under the impression that the property would, uh, would be zoned residential for the back part of the property and the frontage along Domain would be considered uh, general business so uh, evidently there was some kind of a misunderstanding or miscommunication between him and the administration that uh, with the city administration when they uh, agreed to uh, annex the property anyhow I'm over here to respectfully uh, request that uh, if the council could see fit to uh, honor his request on this uh, uh, this zoning uh, uh, amendment and that's that's about all I got to say at this time thank you next speaker Jean Gotro. Hi, and thank you for your time. My name is Jean Gotro, and I am the realtor that is representing Glenn Perrette on this subject project. I come before this council today first as a property owner, a property owner that would be nervous and fearful about rezoning and what this would mean to me, my family, and my property. I would want to know intentions, and that is my reason for being here. The Perrette family has owned this property for decades. They love this property and have every intention of adding value. Glenn's intentions to bring family-friendly businesses are to benefit the community. Now, with an abundant amount of businesses that are allowed with and without conditions in the new zoning proposal, Mr. Perrette has no intentions of allowing apartments, multifamily dwellings, hotels, community housing, cemeteries, bars, or lounges. The, business his, the businesses he is interested in attracting include banking, veterinarian clinics, doctors, and dentist office dry cleaning, spas, hair salon, nail salons, specialty boutiques, ice cream shops, coffee houses, bookstores, pharmacies, etc. Family friendly businesses have been a successful addition to many neighborhoods. For example, on Rena Drive, in between two neighborhoods, you have a strip mall that consists of little Verons on one side and then an insurance company, an interior design business, and a photography shop on the other side. 
These businesses are booming and they are adding value to these neighborhoods. River Ranch offers mixtures of businesses that bring value to its residents. The brand new Corette Farm subdivision has a beautifully constructed mall, strip mall at the front that includes Romicelli's, Anytime Fitness, and more to come. North Domain Road should be no exception. This property is perfect for developing into family-friendly business establishments. The service that will be brought on will add value to this area as well as the property owners. When Mr. Perrette started this process, he was given guidelines and all requirements that had to be met. Each and every one of these requirements have been met and approved. It is of the utmost importance that our government board allow the established process to work and not let bureaucracy get in the way of growth and development. Mr. Perrette respectfully ask for your careful, not fearful, consideration in passing this request. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Todd DeValcourt. Good evening. I'm Todd DeValcourt. I live in Windhaven Subdivision. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, that's the first house I bought, and it was back in 2004. And the main concern we have, and we respect Mr. Perret, because, again, he developed the subdivision. That's my only house that my family and I have lived in. Because when we bought the home, it was zoned single-family residential. And it's been like that ever since the neighborhood was developed. We don't have any issues with Mr. Pratt and his property. It's just the fact that it's, we feel like things are being changed on us now that we've been there for 14 years and 75 of the 80 lots have been de developed with either homes or sold to private individuals. For that reason, we're really in, in opposition to changing it because it, it's the way it was when we bought it and that's the way we wanted it to be when we bought there. We all looked into it ahead of time. There's a few other issues, one including that it's a limited access neighborhood. It's one street in and out. Commercial enterprises in the front would probably increase activity in the neighborhood. And it's a, again, it's a family friendly neighborhood. Our kids play in the front street, so unwanted traffic is another issue that we're looking at. Um, beyond that, the Domain is a heavily residential street from our neighborhood all the way down to Dulles, dozens of houses right up on Domain and several other neighborhoods in that area that encompass a few hundred homes. I ask you all to take this into consideration when you're making your, your vote tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Cindy Boutin. Hi. I am also a resident of Windhaven Lane. I've been there 15 years. I've raised six children there. We built a little bridge so kids could walk to Acadiana High. And, it, and like he said, all of the kids play outside. One of the very few neighborhoods in Lafayette where you will see children playing because it's very safe. And you know, nothing against Mr. Perret, but the way that people take care of their property affects everyone's value. And he is not really taking care of his property very well. <laughs> the lots that are there grow grass thigh high. And um, I asked him one day to please not put the grass in the street. And he told me it wasn't his responsibility. So personally, I don't think that he cares about our neighborhood. You know, if he would let us know what he wants to put up in the front, if we knew, I think the neighbors would, would agree if, if it was something that was neighborhood friendly and that we would all agree to. So that's all I have to say. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Marcia Chamberlain. She passes. Final speaker, A.E. Montanay. I'm here representing the owner. Uh, we feel that the mixed use neighborhood development is the best use of this property. Uh, with the UDC requirements, you know, 20% green area and landscape requirements, retention ponds, and parking requirements, this, you know, a development would be designed that would be appealing and aesthetic, you know, as far as the interest into the subdivision. Uh, an excellent example is Time Plaza on Johnson Street. Uh, everyone, you know, sees the beauty of the development before they go into Broadmoor subdivision. 
and is a very attractive, you know, interest into the development. Um, you know, they mentioned issues as far as, uh, they may mention issues with the drainage, but uh, with the UDC requirements on the drainage, your stormwater runoff is going to be the same as the pre and the post development, whether you have a five year storm or a 10 year storm or a 25 year storm you know, your discharge from the site would be the same. Um, one issue is is putting residential houses whereas on this property, they, you know, 5.2 acres, they could put approximately 35 home sites in the front. But many home sites on collector streets have not retained value. An example would be look at the homes along West Congress Street and the residential homes along Ambassador Caffrey, you know, the not, i say, desirable home sites. Um, one issue with this is we'd like to bring another parcel of ground into as far as business development. You know, this would be a good commercial site, you know, generate tax revenue. Um, and so, we, you know, we feel this commercial development would be the best use of the property. Um, I, you know, this rezoning would allow for medical offices, professional offices, such as for attorneys, CPAs, insurance businesses, um, food markets. You know, as they mentioned uh, on uh, Arena Drive, you know, they have Arena uh, Veron's grocery store in the middle of the neighborhood, and, you know, everyone shops there. It's, you know, it's a good thing for the neighborhood. Also, the zoning would allow for a dry cleaner pickup, uh, health club, animal hospital, and general retail. So, um, you know, they have many other parcels in this area that are zoned for neighborhood businesses and, you know, they continue to function. And it would be, you know, it would be a better quality commercial development than having a residential development there. Thank you. Final speaker. Yes, sir. Um, he was the final speaker. However, um, one citizen who did not wish to speak signed in to support the North Domain Avenue rezoning, while 14 other citizens signed in who did not wish to speak signed in to oppose the North Domain rezoning. Mr. Bellard. Yes, this is in District 5. Um, it's kind of a, a, a double-edged sword when, when people were sold the fact that, hey, it's going to stay residential. It was residential when you got there, and now they want to keep it residential. I could see Mr. Glenn's deal where he might be able to benefit better by making more money if it's rezoned. Um, and, and you get to a point to where when I met with the neighborhood, they might put a doctor's office there. What I got from the neighborhood was the fear of the unknown of what not going to be there. That was never a fear when they bought those lots. Never a fear when they bought those lots. And if they go and put on the four point something acres, 30, 40 homes, that's the neighborhood rolling the dice. So the people I represent of District 5 of that neighborhood told me that they want to keep it zoned residential for those reasons. I respectfully wish the council will agree with them and agree with me and vote for that. Now, on the other side, I could see Mr. Glenn saying, hey, things change. You know, why, why can't I do this? The zoning department said, yes, you could. However, once again, the constituents that I represent wanted to keep it residential. That's what it was when they bought it. So therefore, I will be supporting them. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mr. Nakin. Great point. Um, it's really a tough situation, it really is. Um, I, I see exactly both sides of the the, uh, the coin, and um, I have a few questions. Sarah or, or Jim or somebody, can you come up for a second? Jim Parker with zoning. Yes, sir. Currently, it stands for residential, correct? The property is zoned RS1, single family. Yes. Okay. 
Has Mr. Perret tried or entertained developing residential homes in that area to where the, the, the neighborhood owners was sold that it was going to stay residential? Have you tried to develop it into a small, I don't know, 30 homes or 20 home subdivision? No. Is that your intentions or your intentions are to, yeah, can, can you come up for a second? Or are you your representative with either one? Uh, basically, uh, with the... Uh, or did a, de a commercial developer approach you to tell you that this property would be... I big? think that, w that was what, what my, my dad originally intended when he agreed to annex the, his, his whole property into the city. Okay. Uh, I mean, we're granted we're home builders. Uh, we're involved in real estate. Uh, we, we did build uh, almost 80 something houses in there. And uh, this the, the drainage issue with the new FEMA map that came out that is a big concern to the people, okay? But uh, right now on the table, we don't have uh, a proper uh, anything on the table to move forward to develop the front of that subdivision for residential uh, or for commercial uh, for either okay not at this point not at this point you know well I mean but to move okay. forward with a commercial type development you have to have the right zoning before you get involved Correct. with uh, uh, right uh, clients Architects, right. you have engineering, to have, the whole deal, you know. Right. And and one of the things that has happened uh, is the FEMA maps have changed. So a new subdivision would probably have to build their homes higher, which then the same concern would, would come up. So I understand. I, I, I'm good. I'm some more questions for Jim. Jim, in the in the new zoning, if and should this thing would be approved, they mentioned a bunch of different stuff. What is actually listed that could potentially go there is there walmart's dollar generals is there gas stations is bars i mean when you say neighborhood friendly i heard doctor's office I've, i mean i've traveled there there's a daycare there is some go ahead uh single family is allowed only as a conditional use he's asked for a just regular mn1 so single family would not be allowed however uh duplex and i'll read an abbreviated list uh duplex multifamily be allowed townhouses, uh, small hotels, uh, indoor hospital, animal hospital with indoor only, no outdoor cages, uh, a bank, a, an office, uh, a hair salon, a convenience store, uh, no gas sales. No, no gas station. Correct. Uh, retail Limited has a 6,000 square foot maximum and Retail Limited does not include Dollar General or Family Dollar or that kind of store. So that couldn't go there? It would not be allowed in MN1, specifically. Okay. Uh, child care, uh, church, school, medical office, park, health club, recreational facility. Okay. Why are you saying those things? They sound <laughs> neighborhood friendly. I just don't... Un I it's tough. Uh, land today that has never been developed in 14 or 15 years, it's kind of hard, I feel, in one way, that both sides, the, the residents and have bought for, in the particular subdivision because of that. You know, they wanted to be isolated. They, they knew that there would be more neighbors coming, potentially in the future, never even dreamed of the zoning changes. And I get that. And on the other side, as a property owner, if you don't have, if you can't do residential or it's not suitable with the FEMA and the flood maps or whatever, you, you're kind of limiting the man and his family from developing property. And land today or land in the past that wasn't developed is developed today via Costco. And I mean, there's so many different examples. So I, I guess the other question is, is that area in a flood zone right now? Uh Wrong zoning, sir. Sorry. I, I'm not sure. You got anybody here that we can tell me? I, 
No, sir. Okay, that don't give me nothing. I lived at 5303 Congress and it flooded in 78 or 79. It's in a flood zone. But I mean, I don't know. And it probably is that side of the parish. Okay. Um, yeah, the whole state's in a flood zone, no doubt. Um, is there any current drainage issues in that neighborhood? Yeah. How some of the questions I heard. Um, I don't know. I, it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, you, you ask yourself if, if the residents own that land. If you own the land, would you want government stopping you from a potential development? You have to ask yourself that question. If I ask myself that question, we get told all the time from residents, government tells us too much to do with our property. Now the coin's flipped, and if, if we were reversed and the residents owned the property and you were trying to develop it or get rid of it, you'd probably be upset if the council voted against you to deny you the right. And that's where I'm coming from. Because it's more than just, there's, there's, there's a lot of factors in here. And this council gets put in a situation all the time. Um, so I, I just, I'm going to take a deep breath and I'm going to think about it. And um, I'm going to vote my conscience. And, and if I'm in favor of one or the other, it's nothing personal. It's, it's just trying to figure out and what's, what's the right thing here. And, and, and maybe in a resident's eyes, it's the right thing to leave it res residential. And in developers' eyes, it's not cool or vice versa. I mean, it's, until you're in those shoes, it's, it's a difficult decision and situation. And I respect Mr. Bellard and I, and, and I'll definitely take that into consideration. I just wondered if it was residential and they needed access to your current subdivision, would you still be here supporting the new residential subdivision? Or would it be another stopple of we don't want to interconnect with the other neighborhood because we only want a one in, one out. And we've had that come to the council. And then it becomes a safety issue. A fire breaks out or you need to evacuate the subdivision with 80 homes. Is one in and one out actually enough access to save your family getting in and out? Do they need to connect to the lot next to you to get traffic to flow? There's, there's so many different things that, will, that come in front of us and they're all valid points. It's just, how do you know when when it's going to be good enough you know uh we're doing the right thing we need connectivity if he does build residential homes and he comes up front and says i need to have access to your subdivision then some of you are going to say no we want it one in one out we don't want no through traffic we don't want any of that so then again a developer who owns the property it's the public telling him what he can or can't do with that property which hinders his ability at the same time, you want your subdivision to be your way, and you want it to go according to what you bought it on. And times change, and developments happen, and connectivities. There's so many moving parts to things like that. So that, that's something that always comes about. I'm not saying it's the right thing, it's the wrong thing. I'm just telling you that's a lot of different factors that I, I got to consider when I, when I make this vote. You know, So it's no disrespect to the neighborhood. It's no disrespect to say that you, you, your points are not valid. It is. It's just when you sit up here, you have to look at both sides of the coin. And I'm not comfortable right now deciding where I'm going to go. So I just want to state for the record. But, Jim, thank you for clarifying what can or can't go on the front end. It sounds like, I guess, if I could walk to uh, a Bear Specialty Meats, can a specialty meat place open up next there? Uh, I, you don't have to. I, I, it's just just something that I'm thinking about convenience-wise, or if it's a doctor's office and you don't have to drive across town to Collie Saloon and you actually got a a, 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 a Dr. Darren Menard in your neighborhood that you can walk. Well, I, I mean, just right. anyway, yeah. it's very confusing, very hard. I could do the easy thing and walk out and let y'all vote, but I will have to make a vote at some point. But I do appreciate you. Thank you. Oh, you know that if if this was not in, had not been incorporated, he could do. That does bring a valid point. If he was, so what you're saying is if he was not annexed into the city of Lafayette, he could go by the parish uh, like, like, land use Like ordinance. the property directly across North Domain uh -huh. or the property directly north of his property, which is all unincorporated. Which could be. They could do anything. Anything. They provide the buffers. Pig farm, they can do pipe anything. yard. Provide the buffers. Well, anything. he'd have to meet the standards, but. <clears throat> so what you're saying is the situation can be a lot worse had he not annexed the properties, which you tell him. At that point, he could have done 
still would have to provide green space and buffers, but at that point, he could have put a gas station or he could have put a bar or things that definitely would have not made them happy, correct? Well, I'm not going to tell you what makes them happy. No, but... <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I, I get your point. The, the, well, it's not for you to get the point. It's for everybody to get the point that it could... Potentially could have been worse. Be some other things, yes. Sir. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll think about it. Thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Bellard, yeah, and, and, and meeting with the neighborhood, I, I get the feeling that if you knew it was going there, it'd be a type, a totally different story. Who was there first? The family agreed to have it zoned all residential. All they're simply saying is keep it that way. That's all. Nothing more, nothing less. If someone wants to come and commercial, you know, you, you mentioned a, a meat, uh, specialty meats. That's, Mr. Perret said he doesn't know what he's going to do. He has not entertained it residentially, and he has not entertained it commercially. It's the fear of the unknown. So until the fear of the unknown is done, and that they would maybe know who's buying it, and you could put special restrictions, well, then they would probably come here and say, well, yeah, if I live there, I want to know what's going in front where my kids are playing. You know, and, and the, the thing that it's not an unincorporated, well, we don't live under the, uh, the interstate either. So that's not what we're discussing. We're discussing where they at, they're in the city of Lafayette, and what's best for them. They were there first. They knew buying that property, it was gonna stay residential. Now, it, it, like I said, I'm only saying what they have told me. If it becomes residential and they come back to this council, luckily I probably won't be here, but if you sell it that quick and develop it that quick, there's no way I would support anything because they know what they're up against. And that's just a fact of life that they're gonna to have to balance. But that's what they chose. So if, if they knew what commercial, if it would be a little Veron's, I'm sure they would love that. And I'd love that too, because I live right down the road. But we don't know what it's gonna be. So if it's always been that way, why change their life, as they know it, with their kids, just for monetary purposes, when he can develop it if he would like. He's not entertained either one. So the fear of the unknown is the main thing from what I gathered from the neighborhood. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Next blue card. No more. Um, can you, Mr. Escott, there's going to be an up and down vote, yes or no, and it has been requested for an explanation on what a yes vote means or what a no vote means at this point so everyone could be clear. Before you do that, Mr. Escott, a council member has just requested to ask a question. Mr. Nakan? Earlier, he mentioned that he was in compliance. Has he paid any fees? Has he done the process and acquired? Brett paid the fee for the application and supplied the required survey with the application. Do we know about how much money that has cost? His application fee is $500. I don't know what his survey cost. I need for the record somebody needs to come up. Andre. Montenegro. Montenegro. Say it in the mic, please. Fifteen hundred dollars for the survey, according to the surveyor. According to the surveyor. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's, that's way to go. Way to go. All right. So around two thousand dollars. Okay. All right. Thank you. So. Mr. Cohn. Jim. In the event this rezoning is denied, what is the criteria for Mr. Perret coming back and asking for whatever in the future? Is there a time limit? The code says that he may not ask for the same or less restricted uh, application for two years, which also means that he may ask tomorrow for a more restricted rezoning. That could be interpreted as being RM, a residential mix for apartments. Uh, it could be interpreted, as I believe we've done with Sharon, with a property on Johnson Street, um, 
that he come back with a specific site plan, which would be more restricted than just an open rezoning, and ask for a rezoning to rebuild, to, uh, a conditional rezoning to build this thing specifically. Thank you, sir. What? Restricted, more restricted. He can't ask for the same or less restricted. Less restricted would, would arguably be CM or CH, where you can put more stuff, heavier uses, with more restricted being fewer uses and more restrictions. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Mr. Scott, explanation, please. Sure, Mr. Chairman. I, as I recall, your question was, what does a yes and what does a no vote do? Um, if uh, a vote yes uh, for approval of the ordinance would result in a reclassification of this property to from RS1 residential single family to mixed use neighborhood, a vote no would do the opposite. That is, deny that reclassification and the property would remain as currently zoned. Okay. Is that good enough, Mr. Bellow? Okay. There is no more public comment, and all council members have spoken their piece. So let's vote on the ordinance, please. District 6? Yes. District 7? No. District 8? No. District 9? No. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? No. District 4? Yes. District 5? No. Motion to adopt fails. Ordinance 122-2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the Unified Development Code so as to reclassify the property of Nanette Trahan, case number ZON 2017-22, 821 Rue de Bellier rezoning, located generally west of Rue de Bellier, south of West Congress Street, and north of Nazita Lane, from commercial heavy to residential single family. Motion by Nakin. Second by comp, council discussion. There is none, any blue cards. <coughs> Call the vote, please. District seven? Yes. District eight? Yes. District nine? Yes. District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Yes. District four? Yes. District five? Yes. District six? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Ordinance 128, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the fiscal year 1617 operating budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government to adjust amounts for risk management uninsured loss reimbursements to actual. Motion by Nakam. Second by Abair. Council discussion. There is none. Any blue cards? Yes, sir. Please call the vote. District 8. Yes. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Then item number 14 is deferred per request of the administration. We're going to move to item 15. Ordinance 131, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the fiscal year 1617 capital budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by authorizing the use of prior year fund balance in the amount of $118,000 and appropriating within the office of the Chief Administrative Officer, Lafayette Juvenile Detention Division for additional capital improvements <coughs> needed. Motion by count, second by Nakin. Council discussion. There is none. Any blue cards? No, sir. Please call the vote. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? District 6? Yes. District 7? District 8? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. 
Ordinance 132, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council authorizing the Lafayette Mayor President to enter into negotiations and initiate such preliminary legal processes as may be required to enter into a lease agreement relative to that certain portion of the building known as the Public Safety Building owned by Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government and located in the Clifton Chenier Community Services Center at 220 West Willow Street, Building D, Lafayette, Louisiana, to execute any documents necessary, convenient, or desirable to accomplish the purposes specified herein and to provide for other matters related thereto. Motion by Cone. Second by Castillo. Thank you, sir. Mr. Terrio. Yes, um, Mr. Eskin, I'll probably get you, uh, I don't know if the administration will get on this, but I had a, uh, someone called me and said to initiate such preliminary legal processes as may be required. Would you like to elaborate on that real quick? Um, sure, I'll give it a shot, uh, although I may have to call upon Mr. Bro, uh, Stuart Or Bro. either one, or, okay. or Mr. Bro, well, if you'd like to come up. Is he the one that handles this, Mr. Eskin? Yes, he is. Yes. And Mr. Let, let me take a guess and see if I'm right. All right, shoot. I think it has to do with the fact that we need to initiate the process of the public lease law and satisfy those requirements. But I could be wrong. So that's basically it. <laughs> Solve it in a nutshell, to meet the requirements of the public lease law. Correct. Okay. Well, there you go. That has it. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks, guys. <laughs> you, you agree, Stuart? <laughs> Any other council discussion? Any blue cards? Yes, sir. Please call the vote. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? District 6? Yes. District 7? District 8? Yes. District 9? Motion to adopt is approved. Ordinance 133, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the fiscal year 1617 capital budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by adjusting line items in the amount of $100,000 within the Lafayette Police Department. Motion by Terrio, second by Castile. What a combination. <laughs> Council discussion. There is none. Any blue cards? Please call the vote. District 2? District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? District 1? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Ordinance 134, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the fiscal year 1617 operating budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by increasing revenues in the amount of $7,676.88 received from the U.S. Department of Justice, United States Marshal Service, and appropriating within the Lafayette Police Department. Motion by Bellard, second by Lewis. Council discussion? There is not any blue cards? Yes, sir. Please call the vote. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. Yes. District 8? Yes. 9? Yes. District 1? District 2? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Ordinance 135, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council authorizing the Lafayette Mayor President to enter into a maintenance agreement between Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government and the State of Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development concerning the maintenance of state roadways to include mowing and litter pickup and amending the fiscal year 1617 operating budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by decreasing reimbursement revenues from the State of Louisiana Department of Transportation and Development in the amount of $6,405. Motion by Billard, second by Cook. Council discussion? Seeing none. Any blue cards? Please call the vote. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? District 1? District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. 
Ordinance 136, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the fiscal year 1617 capital budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by transferring $35,152 from the RPL AC Units Fire Department Phase 2 project to the building renovations repairs for various Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government building and repair projects managed by the Public Works Department Facilities Maintenance Division. Motion by Count, second by Bellard. Council discussion. Seeing none, any blue cards? Yes, sir. Please call the vote. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? District 1? District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Ordinance 137, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council authorizing and approving an application for funding from the Louisiana Department of Environmental Quality Clean Water Revolving Loan Fund. Motion, Motion by Bellard, second by Conk. Council discussion. There is none. Any blue cards? Please call the vote. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? <laughs> District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Ordinance 138, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council authorizing the Lafayette Mayor President to accept certain property described here and after for the purpose of operating and maintaining the necessary sewer lift station and treatment plant facilities. Motion by Nakan. Second. Second by Cook. Council discussion? There is none. Any blue cards? Please call the vote. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Ordinance 140, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the official map of the City of Lafayette providing for the annexation of additional land into the corporate limits of the City of Lafayette, Louisiana, 109 Porter Lane et al. Samuel Duga property annexation, located generally north of Cormel Drive, west of St. Marjorie Street, and south of East Willow Street, which is located within Lafayette City Parish Council District Number Four for voting purposes. Motion by Nakan, second by Conk. Council discussion. There is none. Any blue cards? Please call the vote. District Eight. Yes. District Nine. Yes. District One. Yes. District Two. Yes. District Three. Yes. District Four. Yes. District Five. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Ordinance 141, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the official map of the City of Lafayette, providing for the annexation of additional land into the corporate limits of the City of Lafayette, Louisiana. 112 Ridge Road et al. annexation, located generally north of Ridge Road, west of Johnson Street, and south of Westmark Boulevard, which is located within Lafayette City Parish Council District No. 6 for voting purposes. Motion by Conk. Second by Cook. Council discussion. There is none. Any blue cards? Please call the vote. District 9? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? <coughs> yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. We will now move to appointments by the council members, Mayor, President, and or any other direct appointing authority. Jeremy, could you please read item number 25? Mayor President Robodeau appoints Adoria Hankton to the Hyman Performing Arts and FF Bustani Convention Center Advisory Board for a four-year term effective January 8, 2017. We'll now take up introductory ordinances. I'll entertain a motion and a second for taking them in global. That is made by Councilman Notkin. Second by Bellard. Jeremy. Ordinance 123, 2017. 
an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the Unified Development Code so as to reclassify properties fronting the 700 block of Elysian Fields Drive, case number ZON 2017-23, 700 block of Elysian Fields Drive rezoning, located generally northeast of Camellia Boulevard, north of Woods Crossing, and south of the Vermilion River, from commercial mixed to RS1 residential single family and RS2 residential single family. Ordinance 129, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the fiscal year 1617 operating budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by authorizing the receipt of $25,000 in donations from Petco Foundation and appropriating revenues within the Animal Control Shelter Fund and by reducing anticipated revenues in the Animal Shelter Fee Line item. Ordinance 142, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending and restating Chapter 10, Animals of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government Code of Ordinances to consolidate the articles currently affecting the City of Lafayette and unincorporated areas of the Parish of Lafayette to revise outdated provisions to include new provisions pertaining to the Community Cat Diversion Program and to shelter intake and release of animals and to change the name of the Lafayette Animal Control Center to the Lafayette Animal Care Center. Ordinance 143, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the fiscal year 1617 capital budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by recognizing revenues in the amount of $250,000 received from the Justice Department Equitable Sharing Fund and appropriating within the Lafayette Police Department. Ordinance 144, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the fiscal year 1617 operating budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by transferring $34,937 from promotion costs to salaries, holiday pay within the Lafayette Fire Department for additional funding needed and adjusting promotions within the Lafayette Fire Department. Ordinance 145, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the fiscal year 1617 operating budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by increasing promotions line item by $1,534 within the Public Works Department Capital Improvements Division to allow for the promotion of one Civil Engineer 2 employee to the position of Civil Engineer 3. Ordinance 146, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council authorizing and directing the Lafayette Mayor President and Utilities Director to execute the lease agreements for water towers and microwave towers. Ordinance 147, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the fiscal year 1617 operating budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by increasing revenues in the amount of $1,260,323 in CDBG funds received from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and appropriating within the Community Development Department. Ordinance 148, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council authorizing the Lafayette Mayor President to submit the 2017 Annual Plan Grant Application to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Ordinance 149, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the fiscal year 1617 operating budget of the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government by increasing revenues in the amount of $446,868 in home funds received from the U.S. Department of and Urban Development and appropriating within the Community Development Department. Ordinance 150, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council amending the Lafayette City Parish Consolidated Government Code of Ordinances, Chapter 72, Property Management, specifically Article 2, Management and Disposition of Adjudicated Properties, particularly Section 72-15A, Notice of Sale or Donation of Adjudicated Property, Section 7231C and D, Sale of Adjudicated Property by the Administrator, Section 7240F, Initiation of Donation of Adjudicated Property, and adding Section 7220, Administrative Budget Revisions. Ordinance 151, 2017, an ordinance of the Lafayette City Parish Council declaring the building or structure located at 312 Sunny Drive, Lafayette, Louisiana, owned by Tracy Lee Duyon and Terry Jean Duyon, care of Gerald J. Block, attorney appointed to be dilapidated and dangerous to the public welfare and ordering the condemnation of same. Hey, what?
Charlie in a rush one. <laughs> got some milk. You got a, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jeremy, for the excellent readings of those item and <laughs> items. Of course, there's uh, no council discussion. Any blue cards on any of these items? Okay, please call the vote. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. Motion to introduce in Globo is approved. Meeting adjourned. We'll call into session the meeting of the Lafayette Public Power Authority. We have an ordinance for final adoption. Again, this is a public hearing, and blue sheets are available for anyone wishing to address the LPPA. The five-minute rule does apply. Jeremy, can you please read item number two? Ordinance LPPA 235, an ordinance of the Lafayette Public Power Authority amending the fiscal year 1617 capital improvement program budget of the Lafayette Public Power Authority. Motion by Conk, second by Castillo. Any council, any LPP, LPPA discussion on this item? There is none. Any blue cards? Okay, please call the vote. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. District 9? Yes. Motion to adopt is approved. Meeting adjourned. I'm going to find out, jeez. <laughs>